So, I think we technically now need to reactivate our disruptor ammo. Let's do that on all of our weapons. So, uh, well, what have we learned? What have we learned? Oh, also, we should have you guys change. Switch up, change weapon. We want everybody on disruptor. And we have the locust as well. Like that on disruptor. Okay, so in terms of preferred weapons here, probably the answer is still snipers for them. Uh, shotgun is definitely our strongest weapon against these enemies. It's just that uh, it takes a little bit of charge up time, so it might be a little bit difficult to execute. But, okay. Try not to make the same mistakes we made last time. Hopefully we've learned a bit. Let's charge this up. The first of the drones do come out pretty quickly. Fortunately, we can get them both out like that. What we'd love to do is get the Prime's attention. And then, after that... Really? Guys. So, for the past second or two, I was trying to fall back into cover. And uh, both of our teammates body blocked us, and now we may die. Hey, give us a second here. Give us a second here. There's the prime. Okay, so from this range, it's actually, it's kind of difficult to hit with the shotgun. So I say, I mean, technically the locust is better damage against shields. He does not seem very keen on attacking us, which is fine. I mean, look at this. The prime that was causing us issues before. Ah, you know, just do this. <laughs> Significantly easier in this case. So this is the advantage of the Locust over the Tempest and other SMGs, is you probably can't do this with other SMGs. They just don't have the accuracy to pull it off. So as we were saying, we will eventually get more of the, the drones to pop up here. But, you know, if we can chip away at the Prime and ideally take it out, then once that's down, you know, things will theoretically be a little bit safer for us to make that, that trip further down with. Okay, so... We'd like to... Ooh, there's a there's a lot of them. It's kind of open that... Oh, that I thought that was a shotgun. It was not. Kind of like to ideally overload them when they're right next to each other and take two out with one overload, which we almost had the opportunity to do. And then when I opened up the power screen, we unleashed a shotgun shot instead. But ammo could become an issue if we're not careful. That's another reason why using Overload would about. definitely be nice. There is still one remaining. Does Concussive Shot do anything when they're shielded like that? It does do a tiny bit of damage. Still waiting for the Overload. It is back. Now we hit the Prime. And that time we did hit it with the, the shotgun. As I was saying, easier said than done. I suspect, although we are not technically close enough to see what kind of defenses it has, it may be down on its shields. Maybe back to armor now. Okay, but another wave of drones is coming. I don't love. I'd like to move a little bit closer so that we can actually see the prime and know what type of weapon we should be using against it. That one is going to flank us. Soon. So this is actually safer than I thought it would be from this spot. These guys that are right on top of each other. Oh, we got three with one discharge there. That certainly is our best yet. Okay, yeah, the Prime will attack us from this spot. Yeah, it's advancing now, and it is down on armor, as we suspected it might be. It's, uh, it's pushed forward a bit. So... That might be a good thing in some ways. Where are you? Now you're over there. Now we can more easily attack you. Of course, it can also more easily attack us. But now it is no longer Garrus, who is the best 
enemy, or the best person to be attacking it is now more so a Zaid thing. Really a, an us thing. See, so now it's down to health. Overload should still be fairly effective, although now next wave of drones is coming, so we're gonna wanna try to focus on those. That was poorly aimed. Uh, we are running out of ammo on our heavy pistol. We might have wanted to take that opportunity to nab some of the ammo that is directly in front of us. I'm hoping the Prime doesn't get any closer than this. That way we can do the hangout right here. Is this the spot where we were hiding from the drones before? Well, that was what? Two for one discharge? We were saying the concussive shot at least does some damage. I think we're probably going Locust as our secondary option here. I cannot aim from this spot, actually. Fun fact. I was really hoping that would get possibly both of the other uh, recon drones, but alas, it did not. I mean, ideally, we take these out more quickly, and then we could potentially even... It might dictate how much time you have with the Prime before the next wave shows up. Not sure exactly how the timer with the recon drone waves works. As soon as Garrus is off cooldown, overload you because you have more HP. We pop out, do that. Then let's go back to technically shotguns, not great against armor, but it's gonna have to be. Ow. Come on, oh, there's another. Let's see, this is what I mean. We took too long with the recon drones. We had very little time to whittle down on the, the Prime's HP. Hey, very much still of an angle. Give us a minute here. I know Garrus, fortunately, he's using his discharge from that area where it doesn't seem like they're looking to attack him at all. But if we're relying exclusively on Garrus for the damage, then as we were saying, it does mean we don't really have much time to attack the Prime in between waves. So I mean, we'll, we'll try to be patient with it. I think the big thing is that this time what we'd like to do is make a point. We did get two with one overload that time, but we'd like to nab ammo in between waves because we're running out. And that's, uh, that's in many ways our, our biggest problem, at least long term. That's why I'm not contributing more directly. This one there. This surprises me. That yeah, we actually can't poke out for a little while here. If we do take more damage, we could die. Make sure we get our shields back before we do it again. And here's the thing. It might have taken us so long that the next wave arrived. That's an issue. Did that just miss? I think that just missed altogether. So this is proving to be more of a challenge than it, it might seem that it ought to be. But it's just, they're really good at providing that suppressing fire, and obviously a prime, as we saw previously, it's not exactly the type of enemy you want to be waltzing into. Okay, I got the ammo. I got the ammo. Or at least some of the ammo. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> got that done, at least. But, drones are back. We've solved one problem. I am concerned that the Prime, if we leave it alone long enough, will actually regenerate shields, and it probably has done that, to be honest with you. So, uh, this is this is actually a real issue. Let's get, try to get Garrison's Aid up here, where they can hopefully actually fire a bit on the drones, which I did not realize we were so low on HP. Now that we're taking out the drones more quickly. Okay, fortunately, he's not regenerating any defenses at all. Otherwise, we'd be in serious trouble. Prime is down. That's huge. So, that's fantastic. We can already see the new wave of drones coming in, but we can start to make a move on your six. at this point. A little more safely. 
Ooh. Don't like that. However, I, as you may have noticed, our scanner is jammed again. The reason for that is that uh, that prime we fought, it's not the only prime in this area. I'm afraid there is another prime. Um, so here's the thing. We, we could retreat back to our old spot and just do exactly the same strategy we had before. I believe there are quite literally only two primes. There are a finite number of primes. Oh goodness, if there was a, an infinite number of primes, that would be insane. But, uh, so we can play it slow and steady. I think we want to do that. I think we do want to do that if we can. So, really? They're still hitting us. Uh, Garrus is dead. Uh, we will probably look to Metagel here. It may be necessary. I think it will be. And are we in the sun right now? I can't tell. This will also heal us back up. Bring people back to us. Uh, and by that I meant, like, actually come back here. Oh, uh, that was weighted. Wasted. Uh, okay. That dead? Is that the Prime? Prime was on that side before. That makes me worry that the Prime actually is multiplying. Okay, fine. It's great. Or rather, uh, overload that instead. Or, or overload anything, really. Let's go back to the locust here. And overload. I, again, there's thank you. Thank you. I'd like to believe that the shields, uh, well, I don't know if they're down yet, but we're at least dealing damage to them. Now ammo while we can. As we've seen in the past, it can be tough to get it at times. He is advancing a bit here. Enough so that probably can actually hit us right now. Yeah, he's down to health. That's gonna hit us. Look out! Let's go back to the plasma shotgun. Oh, these guys have returned. Not done with you yet. Not sure if that hit, but we are low enough that we need to wait to get our HP back. One left to worry about. Okay. Those are down. Prime may be down as well, actually. That was well timed. I was about to tell you that uh Garrus, there is still at least one drone. It's still seeing a lot of enemies on our map, but actually, we couldn't see our map before because of the prime overloading things. And now we can. So I do believe that means. The second of the primes has now been defeated. So I think that the drones will continue to respawn. But as long as we're relatively smart, which I know is saying a lot. That almost was not smart at all. But uh, we should have time in between waves to advance, especially without the uh, prime to slow us down. Now we go. So we may need to stop every now and again to avoid the drones. Like, there's one on our left flank and one directly in front of us right now, it seems, but... Get rid of you. Find a little hiding place from you. At least until we get shields back. Be good. Come on, Garrus, move, man. Okay. Yep, so we got a few more. But that may have gotten rid of two right there. I think there's still... What, there's a couple. Might be the only two. Let's wait until Garrus has his overload back. We'll blast them both, then we'll try to press forward. 
So again, patience is definitely the name of the game. There's three. There's two next to each other right there. And there's this one here. I think that was... Oh, there are still more, it appears. I'd like to charge up a shot? Not that shot. That shot, which did not hit. This one. Okay, we're getting close here. So I think we probably make a run for it. Technically speaking, if you push way more aggressively than we did, like as aggressively as we did our first time around, then I think you may actually be able to avoid having the second prime spawn at all. Obviously, that could simplify things, but uh, alas, uh, it's a lot easier said than done, at least in some situations. So uh, let's save. And uh, also worth noting, if you double back after having completed that area, I think that uh, the drones can respawn. But as I said, the primes will not, but you could potentially get uh, attacked by another wave of drones. So just be careful if you need to go back for something like ammo. Okay. So, in here, we've got a door, we've got security console to lift security lockdown. I mean, surely that's the answer, right? That doesn't look good. Son of a bitch. Get down. Oh! Definitely like old times, Gara says. Well, so, yeah, you thought those primes, those hunters were the toughest things we'd run into? No, no, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid we've got a ginormous Geth Colossus, which, if you remember from Mass Effect 1, was the most powerful of all Geth enemies we encountered, and in fact, in Mass Effect 1, if you took a hit from a Geth Colossus projectile like that, you would die. You'd get one-shotted. Uh, unless if you were a soldier and had immunity, in which case I think you can tank it. But uh, otherwise, in other more normal conditions, you would die from doing what we just did. But, uh, so there are some interesting things to consider about this Geth Colossus. There are some bugs that are particularly noteworthy. In particular, there is one with the Vanguard involving our biotic charge. I, it can do one of two things. It can make this encounter either significantly easier or significantly harder. And either way, it's gonna trigger some things in strange orders as well. I'm curious to try it out, but I would say that, you know, we're probably going to We'll, maybe we'll try it out, and then either way, if it if it turns out that it happens to go the easy way, things are super straightforward, then we'll, we'll probably redo it and experience things in full. And if it's really hard, then we're probably gonna, like, immediately get demolished by one of the strongest enemies we've ever faced. And uh, so then we'll definitely need to redo it. But either way, let's try it out. So as I was saying, I think it, it requires that we charge this Geth Colossus. And basically, the big question is gonna be, does it have any way of responding when we charge it, or is it just going to be dumbfounded by our presence? We're gonna find out. Uh, if I could hit it, which I cannot at the moment. We might need to get a little bit closer, even though in theory, we have the reticle. Let's see, so we can go through this way. Ooh, that could still hit us through there. That is not a wall. That is an opening. All right, well, we have some people here we can talk to, or at least specifically, Cal Rieger, and this was one of the things that could trigger in a strange order if you uh, charge the Colossus before you talk to Cal Rieger. So, all right, perhaps in that case, maybe we won't. Maybe we won't do that. Over here, get to cover. Hang on, Shepard. Stay down before that Colossus gets ideas. So this is the guy we had on here. the radio earlier. This ain't the time to be picky. Callie's inside over there. She's safe in there? Are you sure she's still alive? The observatory is reinforced. 
Even the Geth will need time to get through it. <laughs> and it's hard to hack a door when someone's firing rockets at you. The Geth are their platoon strength, but the Colossus is the worst part. It's got a repair protocol. Puddles up and fixes itself. Oh. I can't get a clear shot while it's down like that. I tried to move in closer, and one of the bastards punched a shot clean through my suit. Okay, what can we learn here? Uh, I mean, suit rupture for Aquarian sounds like that could be life-threatening. How bad is your suit damage? Combat seals clamp down to isolate contamination, and I'm swimming in antibiotics. The Geth might get me, but I'm not going to die from an infection in the middle of a battle that's just insulting. <laughs> I mean, it's a good point. I mean, think about that. Aquarians, of course, have little to arguably no immune system because they live their entire lives in environmentally controlled suits. But uh, that would make matters relatively difficult when it comes to combat. If you get shot once, you get the most minor of suit breaks, and then suddenly you're exposed to the outside world and you just immediately crumble and die because, you know, your immune system is nothing and suddenly you're exposed to everything. But uh, good to see they have a way to compensate for that at least a bit when it comes to battle. Okay, as for the battlefield layout, it does seem like there's a pretty large open area here. So what is the best method of attack? What can you tell me about the battlefield? Right side's got a catwalk with a sniper perch. You can wreak some havoc from there, but none of my men made it past the get. Middle's got cover, but the damn Colossus has a clear shot at you the whole time, and you've got Geth coming in from both sides. The left gives you some cover from the Colossus, but your ass is hanging out for the Geth. That's how I got shot. Okay, so there's your overview of the three different routes you can take. And to give my own opinion on this, from what I recall, I think that, uh, I think we're going to want to go to the right route where you're saying there's the sniper outpost. I mean, we brought a couple people who can snipe, so that's one of the reasons why we did that. And going down the middle, as he said, where the Geth can just, or the, specifically the Colossus, has a free line of sight on you, um, good luck. Don't do it. <laughs> Left side, you can potentially make the case for it. Um, I think it has more Geth there, theoretically, so it can be tough, but uh, it is possible, especially if you're more of a, a close range person, I think. I think the left side is better for close range, right side is better for long range. Obviously, we are more of a close range specialist, whereas our squad mates are more long range specialists, but I think we still probably want to go to the right side. Other than that, uh, as for the actual Colossus itself, you said it has this repair sequence when it gets damaged. Any ideas on how to deal with the Colossus? The standard protocol with armature class units is to sabotage the shields and whittle it down, you know? Kill it with bug bites. But the repair protocol blows that plan to hell. You try to wear it down, it just huddles up and fixes itself. So whatever we do has to scrap that bastard fast. Probably means getting up close past that cover. So that's the key thing is we can attack it all we want from back here. But if we do so, eventually it'll just huddle up and repair itself and it's gonna undo all the progress that we made. So for that reason, we do need to find a way to get closer. So that's one of the reasons why if you can pull it off, which we couldn't quite do, we just couldn't get the target to working, uh, targeting to work, uh, using the biotic charge for the Vanguard specifically, can potentially be very interesting because it does of course immediately get you right up on top of the colossus and as i was saying colossus generally does one of two things either it realizes you're right next to it and it goes oh okay one moment while i annihilate you good luck you're probably gonna die immediately especially because you can biotic charge your squad mates cannot so you're all by yourself or Alternatively, you charge it, and it's like, what is this human doing here? I don't know. Hmm, let me think about this. And does almost nothing. And in that case, what you can do is you have the opportunity to attack it from point-blank range. There are other Geth on the battlefield, and they are the biggest threat in that case, and you just have your squad mates try to deal with them as they eventually start to provide some support fire and get closer. Uh, so that's... That's the way in which it can be doable. And this is, just to be clear, specifically if you do it at the very beginning of the encounter, I think it has to be before you talk to Cal Rieger. Otherwise, 
I think no matter what, the uh, Colossus is going to notice you. Uh, I mean, at some point, once we get close enough to at least have support fire from our teammates reliably, then we probably will charge to get closer, or we very well may. But anyways, that's just uh, a meme that you could potentially look to try out if you are playing a Vanguard as well, and you're feeling up for the chaos, the challenge. But anyways, what's the plan? We need to get the tally. Got any ideas? Just one. I'm not moving so well, but I can still pull a trigger. And I got a rocket launcher that the sun hasn't fried yet. I don't know. I'll keep the Colossus busy. Maybe even drop its shield. With luck, you'll be able to finish it off. That doesn't sound good. Uh, it sounds like if you're injured, then it may be best if you stay put. Because, I mean, as we were hearing before, I think every other Quarian beside you and Tally is dead. So that's kind of important that we keep people alive here. You've done enough, Rieger. You don't need to throw your life away. Wasn't asking your permission. My job is to keep Tally safe. <sighs> Not so fast. We have enough people on our side for you to take one for the team. Stand down. I'm not going to stand there while you run into enemy fire. They killed my whole squad. And if you want to honor your squad, watch my back. I need you here in case they bring reinforcements. <sighs> All right, Shepard, we'll do it your way. Hit him for me. Get us alive. Hey, All right. Me. So, so now we'll get thrown straight back into the encounter. A few things to note about that conversation there with Cal Rieger, because that can go several different ways. Yes, you can have him provide some support fire with his rocket launcher. It will, I forget if he specifically targets the Colossus and the Colossus exclusively, or if he also attacks just the normal death, but the key thing there is if he does do that, you have functionally a timer. And if you do not kill the Colossus quickly enough, Cal Rieger will be no more. So that is why, kind of important, kind of important, I think, to talk him down in that situation. And of course, if you're looking to do that, then you got that interrupt that you got to hit. Otherwise, he's going to try to be a hero. But as he was saying, we have three options here. We can go right down Main Street through the middle. But uh, as you can kind of see, the Colossus has some high ground, so it can shoot you from behind cover, and you're toast. Good luck. There's no way that's going to work. We can go down the right side catwalk here, which has this narrow pathway, and could, could potentially uh, be the best option here. I think it is, uh, it's sunnier. Bear in mind, of course. When we're in the sun, we are still going to have our shields take damage and we're not going to be able to regenerate life. So that's potentially a challenge, but that could very well be the route we want to take. And then the other potential option would be to go down the left side, which is a little hard to see here, but I think we've got a ramp right on the edge there that you can just barely see the edge of, and then you go further down that direction. And that's, I think, is sort of the, the alternative to go in up this route. Uh, it's definitely better than going down the middle. I think it does have more geth, but uh, as I was saying, I think this is generally sort of a better close range option. This is a better long range option. I think we're gonna prioritize the long range stuff. Uh, so let's go for that. I think this is also another encounter where at least on the left side, I'm pretty certain that the geth will spawn infinitely. On the right side and through the middle, I'm not as certain. But let's try to make a run and maybe immediately get annihilated. <laughs> Might need to charge to get shields back. And then make our run. Ooh, that still hit us. Okay, so there are still Geth up here. Including this one that kind of has line of sight on us. Um... Let's see, we've got troopers over there. Got troopers in the middle. My question is mostly just, is anyone going to hit us while we're still trying to get our shields back? And the key question is, is that person going to be you? We could try to charge you and get up there more quickly. That may be feasible. Oh, also worth noting, we're mostly seeing troopers here. But I think it is possible to encounter both hunters, the invisible ones that uh, shoot... Uh, shotguns at you from close range and I think rocket troopers may show up occasionally as well 
So just bear that in mind. You may not just have the basic troopers, and obviously there's the Geth Colossus as well, which is the primary threat, but uh, or the primary thing we're trying to take down. This guy doesn't seem too keen on attacking us. Saeed and Garrus are getting annihilated right now, though. So let's have them try to move up there. I think that's going to be our preferred spot. Do that. Hit us. Let's go for it. I think this is our spot. Guys, get right here. You got it. Get shields back. Saeed, don't be a hero. Okay, so we want to try to pick times to move out and attack them. Ideally, when the Prime, or rather the uh, Colossus, is not firing. Because it does have a bit of a rhythm. This guy's getting pretty close, though. Fields, please. Right on the other side of this wall. So, like, these death may technically respawn. Is this technically still in the sun? Not entirely sure. Do that. Do that. I think we are safe here. So, this is a destroyer. Oh, that's another type that I did not consider. But uh, this is the kind with the flamethrower. But once the shields are down, we can overload it and have its plane power explode on neighboring enemies. Which we will do here. Unfortunately, there was not anyone close by. But, uh, okay, so I think we want to keep our friends there, perhaps, and just use their powers. Meanwhile, we will move up. Let's make sure... Uh, if we can switch to this. Okay, yeah, they are both on Cypress. I think that is the way to go. Okay, so we've got basic troopers, and that guy looks like he was... Cloaking, the one there with the blue note. Not, well, obviously that's not a Colossus, but that may still be a normal trooper. So we want to try to basically inch forward, hugging this railing here, because if we do that, we should be able to avoid being in the sun. Whereas if we actually walk through the middle, then we will be in the sun and lose our shields. So we obviously don't want that. We could, as I was saying, technically speaking, we could biotic charge and get close, and that could start to get us in range to start working on the Colossus. That's possible. Not necessarily sure we want to do that at the moment. We might want to get a little bit closer before we make that final push. So, I mean, that's just, of course, one of the potential benefits of being a Vanguard. What if we toss a flashbang grenade here and try not to get hit by that? We did actually hit a couple of the uh, troopers, so that's good. Maybe it's similarly, Inferno Grenade. Another one that is not nearly as good against Geth as it is against uh, humans. Wait for this shot and pop out. So like here, we could potentially area charge, hit two enemies, but I think I'd love to get rid of your shields. Patience. Patience is key. Patience is key. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Although, if Garrus would use the ability that I told him to use, that would be helpful. Thank you, Garrus. You're... Oh, you were about to die, and then you're, you got your shields back. That's not good. Let's see. The Colossus is about to fire. We're going to try... Not Unity. Uh, Because oh, I'm not trying to target the Geth Colossus with, with pull. I know that's not going to work. I would like to target this Geth Trooper with pull. Except I want to try to get the angle right. No, not the Colossus. Thank you. Okay, back and cover quickly enough. Yes, we did. That's good. Okay, so now, for example, there appear to be just two Geth down here. One of which is currently pulled. The other one is not. But, uh, I mean, if we concussive shot, for example, it is relatively safe at the moment to make this move. So we could consider charging here. I think we will. It's risky to a certain extent. We're going to go for it. Okay, this Geth Trooper's not dead yet. He is the one back there. Do that. Okay, so now we have the Colossus right here. And 
there is at least one more enemy in this area. There's other lootable stuff here like power cells. Speaking of power cells and heavy weapons, this could be a decent time to break out the heavy weapons if we'd like. Let's charge up this guy. That's old. Movie. Okay, so we've gotten to a good position to attack the Geth Colossus from. Remember, in the past, Calvigor was saying how it would typically, when it got damaged, huddle up and initiate its repair sequence, and that was preventing him from shooting it because it had enough cover to prevent him from doing anything from there. However, if we're over here from this angle, then we should be able to hit it when it's doing that, and I believe more or less completely shut that down. Uh, so, I would love if we could get our friends to tag along with us. That is one downside to using a charge to get here, is our friends are, of course, not going to be able to cover that ground nearly as quickly as we can. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to uh, make sure that it wasn't a swarm of geth we were charging into. So we at least had enough time to get cover here. Tempted to use Garrus's overload to help us out. Although we may need for Garrus to use it for that one enemy that is between them and us right now. Coming. Okay, our shields went down because I think we did take some hits from the Colossus. Uh, oh, that was fast. Okay, um, that's very good. I think that the normal Geth here, the troopers may respawn infinitely. That may be the case. In which case, we, I mean, to a certain extent, you want to whittle them away so they don't make life too difficult for you. But you also want to make sure that you actually, you know, attack the Colossus itself. I just want to make sure that these guys actually stay in cover. And don't try to, like this, be a hero. Okay, wait for this. Fortunately, the Colossus is pretty keen on attacking Shepard, and Shepard exclusively, it seems. And uh, Garrus is definitely the best from a power standpoint, using Overload on the Colossus, whereas Zaid... Let's try to finish off some of the basic troopers. For us... for you to stop. Time to reload, though. We getting cover in time? Uh, we did not, but it actually didn't hit us that hard, surprisingly. Again, in the original Mass Effect, Mass Effect 1, that would have annihilated us, potentially one-shot us. But, uh, not this time. Not this time, but let's not risk that. Yeah, so, like, right now, our squad mates have time to be shooting this guy down. Because he's just focusing entirely on us. This is actually a situation in which it would make sense to switch over to assault rifles. Those should be more effective against shields. Although, that's probably about to change if the shields go down right now. They are about to. Now to armor. Uh, actually, it is, I think, better to use assault rifles, or rather, uh, sniper rifles against armor. So, alright, switch back. Wait for this. Pop up for that. Technically, the Carnifex is kind of, sort of, a little bit better against armor. For it. So this is a round where it might have initiated its repair sequence before, but when we got it on the flank and we're this close, it cannot repair. So here's the thing. The Colossus is down. That's obviously the big enemy. There are still a few more Geth hanging around here. I do think we need to finish them off. So we're not off the hook just yet. But we're close. Got one over here. Looks like a basic trooper. Should have had that shot ready to go. There's at least one on the far side as well. There's obviously, as we're starting to see, other things that we can loot as well. We? we can steal this cover. Does seem like a nice spot. I'm trying to shoot a Cal Rieger. How dare you? Fire in the hole. Uh, well, we missed with that. It's not, of course, directly targeting that Geth. You could, like, actually hit him, though. Yeah, maybe we just get closer. We've got lots of power cells. There is another enemy over here. Let's have our enemy, or er, our allies, actually on us now. Suppose we'll nab power cells. 
Oh, hello. They're focused on Cal Rieger so much they didn't even notice us sneaking up on him like that. All right, let's, uh, let's actually nab the other power cells while we're over here. We might as well, I suppose. Might as well. As I was saying, if you choose to have Cal Rieger help you, then you are basically on a, a timer in which you have to defeat the uh, Colossus and I assume all the remaining yet by a certain amount of time. And there we go. That is our signal that the Geth are down. So let's just loot the remaining stuffs here. Got a lot of Iridium. We may be able to talk to Cal Rieger again. Obviously, uh, we can still take damage. From hanging out, or at least damage to our shields if we hang out out here. More Iridium here. Basically at all the cranes. Take a look real quick at what the left side looked like. This is the other potentially viable side. Would have been to go this way. And uh, I suppose what the, the idea is with that blocking you, you have pretty decent cover against the Colossus, but then you've got this huge area here where it's not the easiest thing to take down the Geth, especially when you're out in the sun like this. So that's one of the reasons why we went to the right side. Let's see. We can still chat with Cal Rieger. Is he still there? He is. And there's a medkit here as well. Nice job. I'll get the tally. I'll just be a minute. All right. 